Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cine Cool, and this is EverQuest Project 1999. And today we're getting very close to dinging to level 12 on our Dark Elf Necromancer. We're in Nariac selling some stuff. This is why I'm always so heavy. I grab as much as I can, I wait till I can barely move, and then I go to the vendor and sell it all. But that does pay off. That does pay off in this video because I get two new bracelets uh, for 25 plat. Zombie skin, that's what I'm pointing to there. Uh, zombie skin from that camp that we were sitting at, that stone where the zombies pop over and over. Um, one platinum, seven gold, eight silver for a stack of zombie skin. Or I think that was just like eight zombie skins. No, I think it was a stack. You get like one platinum per stack. Almost like a plat and a half for a stack of zombie skin. So. Like I was saying, it's a very desired camp. That's pretty good. Uh, under level 10 to get a a plat for a st uh, plat and a half for a stack of uh, something that you pretty much get every for every kill, almost I think. And um, it's light. And if you don't pick up all the weapons and all that crap, and you only pick up the zombie skin and you stay there uh, and grind and grind and grind, you get stacks and stacks of zombie skin and lots of experience and it's an easy camp unless a lesser mummy pops but yeah and here's the bank so i went to a vendor close to the bank um i sell to that vendor and then i come into the bank and i um you know make sure i have at least one weapon for my pet one or two weapons for my pet um make sure i have bone chips make sure i have food put all my uh, money into the bank and it's cool when you go to the bank because you can change copper to uh, silver or gold and then silver to gold or, or plat and then gold into plat or whatever. So you're able to get, you know, make your currency less heavy. Um, exchange it for higher currency. But uh, I will skip ahead. We're not going to just look at me doing vendor stuff. So let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit here. Um, I think that worked pretty well last time, but now we're leaving the bank, so we're going to go ahead and gate, which uh, will take us out to the Nectalus Forest. Now here we are out in Nectalus Forest. We're going to run back to, uh, I think we're running back to the commons, because I was going to stand there and see if I could buy some stuff while I level, I only need like one or two kills to get level 12. So I was going to, um, I was going to go to level in the Eastern Commons while I look for some new gear, because what I had figured out was my level 12 spells only cost like 6 plat each at the most, and there's like 11 of them, so that's 66 plat is how much I would need for all my spells, so that's the only amount of uh, plat I need to save. Um, the only thing I forgot was to bring the, bring the plat with me, as you'll see. Uh, but this is us just running to the Eastern Commons. You guys have seen this run a bunch of times. We just passed Lava Storm. Um, we're heading towards that Halfling Camp right now. There, It's right down there on the left, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's along this wall. Here's the water. I accidentally went into the water, which I probably could practice swimming in that water. I'm just not sure if those uh, piranhas will attack me or not in there. They're red. I could figure it out, but um, I didn't want to risk it. Because I could probably put myself in the water swimming against the wall and, and up my swimming skill. It's something you want to do at some point because you never know when you're going to have to swim away from some enemies. And like, if you have a very low swimming skill, you're going to go super slow and they're just going to catch you and pound you into the water and you're going to drown. So it's, it's a good idea to get your swimming skill up, even though it's like a pretty worthless skill. It's a good idea to try to get it up, uh, just in case you have to go through the water. Tried to wave to that guy, but didn't didn't hit it. Now let's go forward a little bit on the path, using a different camera view. There I am. On oh, that bag on my hand, you guys, I'm surprised no one's asked yet what that bag is on my hand, on my left hand. That's just a fire beetle eye that kind of um, illuminates around your uh, vicinity, just a little bit. Um, it's just because I have nothing else to put in that hand, so. I put a fire beetle eye in that hand just because I could. And it actually does something. I don't know why it looks like a bag. I guess it would be harder to make it look like a... a why don't they just make like a glowing aura around your hand? I don't know. 
But it just looks like a bag for some reason. Like, if you throw something on the ground, you know how it turns into a bag no matter what it is, unless it's a weapon? I think that's what that is, just a bag on my hand. But it's not a boxing glove or anything, I don't know. I don't know what you guys would think it was. I'm surprised no one's asked about it yet, though. Just loading, so I'm going to skip ahead. Alright, here we are in the Eastern Common Lands. Um, getting ready to go, because I do need to get a couple kills to get my level. Uh, and you, as you can see, this guy right here, Ciro, I'm really eyeing that, uh, that right there. Family Jewels. Ciro's Family Jewels. Ah, I keep hitting stuff with my... Uh, all that stuff is stuff I would, I can use. Um, so, I was really eyeballing that. He's got a 55 HP, 5 AC ring, 55 HP, 5, 55 MP neck. Um, you know, stuff I could use. 7 intelligence, 7 strength neck. Um, all kinds of stuff. So here I am sending him a tell already. But I'm a, I'm a noob. Uh, I'm a broke noob. So, I say, how much is the cheapest item? And I say, I'm level 11. Because we, we start out in this video as level 11, but we do hit level 12. That's kind of the point of this video, just showing me doing a little bit of wheeling and dealing for some new equipment and hitting level 12. I mean, that's basically what this video is about. So, send him that message. Um, it's probably not a message he wanted to see. Uh, he'd probably rather somebody hit him up for something that is a lot of plat and not something that is uh, just a little bit. Sure, he doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He just wants to make some sales. But eventually he tells me that um, five plat for cheapest jewels, uh, which I don't even know what that means. I just end up telling him, hey, I need a wrist. I have nothing on one of my wrists, so I need to bust down my wrist. Give me a rolly. Uh, I need something for my wrist. And then he ends up telling me it's 25 plat for the thing that he has for the wrist. To be honest, I think he was trying to overcharge me by just a little bit, but he redeems himself. So I don't even, so wipe that clean. Don't even forget that I said that because he ends up giving me two of them for 25 plat. One for each wrist. So I don't even know why I said that, but I'm just trying to say I'm a noob and I don't know what anything costs. So people could charge me whatever. And if I had it, I'd probably give it to them. Like, um, I don't think I got it on video, but later on I get a Dragoon Dirk, which isn't like the best thing ever for a Necromancer, but it's something, and it's a magical weapon, so now I can deal with those uh, mummies that I couldn't deal with before, those air elementals that take magical weapons. Like, I could deal with them, and that's all I wanted. I'm like, man, I need a magical weapon. I don't really care what it is, as long as it's a little bit of an upgrade. I was going to buy it, because I'm sick of these... Uh, elementals and mummies and stuff you need magical weapons to kill like that was getting on my nerves i think eventually like your pet your pet's fists turn into magical weapons but um i don't know when that is so i'm gonna have to look that up so instead i got myself a dragoon dirk for 50 plat i don't know if that's good or not i think the dragoon dirk should probably be more like 25 plat and the wrist that I got should probably be more like 20 plat. Like, I think I got ripped off with the Dragoon Dirk. Not with the wrist, because he gave me two. But I saw somebody selling a similar wrist for, like, 15 plat later in the night. But it wasn't as good. So, I don't know. Zero's probably good. I don't want to disparage him. He's He gave me two. I don't know why I'm like that. I just, I'm just i a noob, and I don't know how much stuff costs, basically. And I think I overpaid for a Dragoon Dirk later on. So... Just getting down on myself, I guess. Um, let's see. So, we're just making the deal. I said, just do one wrist. I need spells soon. And I was telling him I'm a necro, because sometimes you can't use certain things, depending on your class or your race or whatever. He says, no good JC earrings under 150 plat for intelligence caster, but necklace 40 plat for a 4 intelligence one. Yeah, I was about to buy one of those. Later on, I swear. Yeah, I think somebody was selling one for 50 later on, so he ha he has good prices, so never mind. Sorry, dude. I mean, he might. I have no clue. 
But I say, okay, I'll just just do the one wrist for now, but I'm going to put you on friends for uh, after I get my spells. So, and I looked him up later on because I did appreciate him giving me two wrists, and uh, I was I looked him up later on when I was looking for to buy something else after I had bought my spells, which I get Bind Affinity, which is an awesome spell. You can I've already told you guys about that. You can put your uh, spawn point wherever you want. So if you die, you can pop up there wherever you want. You just have to set your bind point, or you can gate to that bind point, so it doesn't have to be about dying. You can just gate to it. I end up setting my bind point right next to the bank for now, because I'm tired of starting in Nectalus and then running through, like, three zones to get to the bank. So now I can just gate and I go straight to the bank, instead of having to load up, like, two or three different zones just to get to the bank. Um, that was my idea for my first bind point that I ever did, was pretty close to the bank. Putting on lesser shielding, just to make sure I have a little bit of extra uh, armor and whatnot in case I get jumped by something. Um, he said, um, I think he ends up saying that he uh, doesn't have the materials he needs to make the wrist. So he has to run to Freeport. So while he's doing that, I start killing, and then I realize I don't have plat on me, so I need to run to the bank as well. And I felt like such a noob. But I'm buffing up. I'm getting less and less of a noob, though. I got some decent... I'm getting equipment. Starting to get equipment. Getting to level 12. So we're out of the single digits, at least. Um, actually, I wonder if I did record uh, the other night. I don't think I did, man. I wish I had, because I got another key for... Uh, you remember the locked door that our corpse got stuck behind? I got another key for that. So now I have one in the bank and one on my person. So now that'll never happen again. I can just grab the one out of the bank and go through the door if I die. I'm not ever going to get stuck behind that door again because now I have two keys, which is possible. And I I just camped that, that Shadow Knight spawn until it, it popped and I got another key. And if it wasn't, if I wasn't able to pick it up for whatever reason, there was another person standing there that needed one. I felt kind of bad because I was getting my second key, and they were probably getting their first key. But, you know, I was sitting there for a minute before they came up and asked about, are you camping this? And I said, yeah, I'm waiting for the Shadow Knight to drop the key, which doesn't always pop. But here we're just running to the tunnel, so I'll go forward a little bit. Um, I don't know what happened there. I think I'm just running around the tunnel. I get attacked by an air elemental, so you get to see me fight this thing. Which killed me before, remember? This thing has killed me like... It killed me once. And then it almost killed me again. Somebody saved me. But look, I can't hit it because... Look, like my pet's trying to hit it, but an air elemental is invulnerable. So I can't hit it. My pet can't hit it. Only thing that's going to do damage to it is my spells. Luckily, I'm right next to the tunnel, but I don't know if I'd make it in time. Because even if I run up to that tunnel, somebody would have to notice that I'm in trouble to, to help me. So I'd have to run, like, right now and then, like, dance around and yell and scream for somebody to save me. But I'm glad I got this on video. Some revenge on an air elemental. Which, it was still a pretty close fight, uh, surprisingly. Just sucks that you can't hit him with... Like, my pet can't do anything to it. I need to figure out when my pet gets magical fists, because then I'll stop give, giving him weapons, and just let him punch for situations like this and the lesser mummy that we die to. You notice a theme here? Every time I die, it's usually to a, a something that I can't, my pet can't attack. If you take my pet out of the equation, then I'm a lot weaker. Um, and every time, I, I feel like I've died like five times so far, something like that. Maybe a couple more than that, but around five, six, seven times so far. And three or four of those deaths have been to enemies that I can't hit because I don't have a magical weapon. Like, I made that mistake like two or three times, and then I got jumped by them like two or three times. And if I get surprised by something, I can't even hit, you know? Sometimes I try to run away, it doesn't work out. I don't. Sometimes I don't have gate up. Or, or my gate fizzles or breaks down or gets interrupted. I've, it's happened. I've been jumped before and killed by something that I couldn't hit. Um, 
I've tried to kill mummies before that I couldn't hit that were yellow or, or white, and they just kill me because my pet can't hit them. I can't hit them. Only thing we can do is spells. Um, remember the lesser mummy behind the locked door? That was that kind of surprised me when I was killing another enemy, and I probably could have figured that. A couple of the times I probably could have figured it out, but anyway. Tell this guy crap, I don't even have it on me. I'll have to go to the bank anyway. So I'm getting uh, enough mana to cast gate, and then we will... We have to gate back to the bank, but I can show you um the way to the bank. So that might be interesting. But we'll skip the loading and the gating here. Just casting gate, just loading. Here we are back in Nectalus, so I'll show you the way to the bank. So this is the way, once you gate, your every Dark Elf will start in that spot. So you just turn a little bit and run to this tunnel. This is Nariac. Um, lots of people sit here by the zone line. This is the zone line for Nariac right here. So now we're loading into Nariac. Let me uh, skip a little bit so we don't have to do loading. Oh, uh, that was a little bit too far. I guess I'll just wait. Instead, we'll just wait so you can see the the way to the bank. Because it was very confusing when I first started. Alright, this is us loading into Nariac right here. So this is what you're going to see as soon as you load into Nariac. You're going to be looking at a wall. I probably just haven't realized yet that it loaded in. I'm probably looking away from my computer screen. And I should probably skip forward. But there we go. So you head down this way, and you're going to head through this arch, which is like the only way you can go. Then you're going to take a left and go through this doorway. Then take another, then take a right, I'm sorry. Follow along this thing and go through this tunnel. Okay, and this is a zone line, so you just keep following it until you're loading again. So you, the only, you go straight ahead to an archway. You go under that archway. You take a left. You go in, through that door. You run into, like, a building. You take a right at that building. You'll run into like a rock or a or a pillar or whatever you want to call it. And you follow along that to the right and you guide yourself into that tunnel in between the two rocks. That's the zone line coming out of the the uh, foreign foreign quarter into Nariac Commons. So here we are in Nariac Commons just going the only way we can go so far. Open this gate. You'll see people killing uh, guards here sometimes. That guy right there, that guard. Just keep going straight. Open this gate as well. And the theme here is we're going to be taking lefts after we go through gates, pretty much. Here's a left, another gate. Open that. Go left. And it's right here. It's called the Nariac Down Under. So it's the first building on the left after you uh, come in that gate. Go all the way to the back. Here's the bank. And this is the bank you can go to. Um, and the door on the right, right before the bank, uh, is a nice place to sell stuff. And the door straight across from that one, which is the last door on the left before the bank, you can get food and bandages there. So that might be the best place to sell, actually. I don't know why I go to the lady across the hall. I should probably just go to the place where they're selling food and bandages, so I can do it all in one spot. But anyway, the last door on the left before you get to the bank is the best place to like sell and buy food and buy bandages and stuff like that. It's close. It's close to the bank, so it's convenient. And uh, it's right here. It's uh to the right. If I if I look to the right, it'd be right there. Across from the blind fish and like something else. Not enough mana to cast gate, so we're gonna met up and cast gate, and we'll be back out in the forest after we grabbed our money. Still uh, meditating, still meditating, and now we're loading to the forest. Here we are back in the forest. You guys have seen this run a million times. We just follow the right wall, we skip a lava storm, we skip the halfling camp, we get to the water, we take a left, we go across the bridge, we follow the path, and then we go through the tunnel into eastern common lands. Looking up, making sure the guy's still online, zero. Like, hopefully he didn't run away because I'm taking forever. Going along the right wall here. Still going along the right wall. Along the water now. We hit the water and turned left. So I guess this video is about directions. How to get to the commons and how to get to the bank. Following the path. Killing at that stone real quick. I'm trying to get my level. He wasn't really responding to me. So ding! Level 12. I just killed one zombie and got my level. So that was pretty cool. 
now I'm level 12. I think I kill this other one too, just to... Oh, no mana. No mana, let's just go. We're meeting somebody, let's not uh, make it take even longer. But yeah, level 12, that's what I'm saying there with my cursor. Booyah, ding, grats, all that. Brand new uh, experience bar to go through. Takes a while. If you don't know anything about this game, and you're somehow still listening at the 20 minute mark, it takes a long time to level up. Depending on where you're leveling, what level you are, all that stuff. There's even stuff called hell levels that take really, like a very long time. I think it's like level 40 and 45 and like 49 or something and like 50. And There's these levels that are called hell levels, educational purposes. And they take like three times as long as a normal level or something like that. And I don't know why the screen does this sometimes when uh, we're loading into a zone, but I'll skip by that. We're back in the eastern common lands, heading towards this guy to uh, buy a bracelet. One bracelet. I say keep the change, you filthy animal, because they're talking about uh, Home Alone. I go up a little bit to make sure no one else already said that, but all my chat is from a different zone, so I don't know. I could be repeating something someone else already said, and but it is what it is. I'm going to scream that out loud. OOC, that means out of character. Order a cheese pizza all to yourself, that's what. What else do you do when you're alone at home? Order a cheese pizza all to yourself, that's what. Keep the change, you filthy ammo, that's what I said. Uh, adding to the little uh, chat that they're having in the out of character. Probably not the best thing to do as you come into a, a zone and not knowing what they've already been saying, but... Anyway. People asking for clarity, people asking for so. It's a good place to ask for it, because there's so many high-level people sitting up here that if you need a, a clarity or a so, you can usually find somebody and that'll at least do it for like 5 plat or 10 plat or whatever. But here's this guy. Really cool jeweler gnome. I think he is an enchanter, like a level 54 enchanter or something. I say hail, Ciro. That's the way you... uh. Notify somebody that you're you're there. That's how you greet people in this game. You say hail, and he is must be getting the bracelets ready for me or the bracelet. At this point, I don't. I think it's just one bracelet. You'll see he he inspects my equipment right here. Zero is looking at your equipment. I keep bringing up that stupid bar. Zero is looking at your equipment. If you do backslash inspect, I think you can look at someone else's equipment. So he was looking to see if what I had in my other wrist. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get 25 plat. And um, he puts another one in there. It's so nice of him. I don't know if he was making sure I was going to uh, put the plat in or not. But I get two of them. And I'm like, are you sure? That's amazing. He said, yeah. And I say, oh, thanks. That's awesome. Two of them for the price of one. What a dude. Check this guy out. If you're watching this and you're on green server, C-I-R-R-O. Good dude. Good dude. He says, enjoy. Tell all your friends and guildies. Heroes family jewels are the biggest and shiniest. Great deals for all. Refer, refer your friends and guildmates and get future discounts. So here I am referring uh, at least like 30, 40, 50 people, uh, Ciro. So give me some discounts. Sorry if I said anything new, newbie in, earlier in this video, because I have no idea what things cost, so I'm just working it out in my own head. You know what I mean? I probably should look stuff up. So I'm groveling before Ciro. That's kind of like a emote you can do when people are way higher level than you. I like to do the grovel. Putting them on. I should have put them on right in front of him since he gave me one for free. Uh, I'm seeing how much time we got left. Sorry. I hate... Now this cursor brings up the bar at the bottom and whatnot. But putting them on, uh, let's see. They are 2 AC, 15 HP, 15 mana. Now later on, that's not going to be amazing, but early, the earlier you can get something like that, the better. Because 15 HP and 15 mana are actually something to me at this moment. Uh, 15 HP out of uh, 200 and whatnot. Um, I guess that's not a ton, but it's 30 total. 
So like 10%, more than 10% of, of a gain, more like a maybe 12 to 15% gain. And then uh, the mana is probably what, what is the best part, you know, like 30 mana. I don't know how much mana I have, but it's probably less than the HP I have. Um, not sure. I should have checked. But 30 mana, that's welcome. For 25 plat, 30 mana, like, I don't think you can beat that at this early level. And then later on, I get a Dragoon Dirk and another key for that locked door. So I'm just uh, moving up in the world. A uh, nice magical weapon. It's a fast weapon, too. It's like, um, it had like one or two more damage than my staff that I have on right now. And it was like five delay faster. So if that staff is 528, I think, then the dagger's like, it's either six or seven and 23, which the higher your damage and the lower your delay, the better the weapon is pretty much. So got one or two higher damage. And then I got five mo less delay. And that's five less delay is like, that's like 20% faster at, at that in that range, you know, 23 instead of 28, that's 5 out of 28 there, so around 18% or so faster, something like that, pretty good, I don't know why I'm trying to do math in this video, but uh, let's do like maybe 4 more minutes, so it's a nice 30 minute video, but we got our level, we got our new bracelets, we get a Dragoon Dirk later, we see Doho there, I think I'll just end up running. Where am I going now? Oh, I'm going to go get my spell. So now I can show you where the Necromancer Guild is. This is this will be interesting as well. So once again, running into um, Nariac. So I'm using a auto run. That's why I'm running into the wall. So we're zoning into Nariac. See if I can. All right, here's the tunnel. The only way you can go. I'll take a left again. Always a left, it seems like. Then a right. At that building, follow this rock along in between the two rocks. This will take you out of the Nariac Foreign Quarter and into the Nariac Commons. So this is the zone line right here to the Nariac Commons. Let's see if I can go a little bit forward. Here's the only way you can go. It's 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 a gate. You'll come to it no matter what. Okay, under the tunnel again, past the guards to the only way you can go. This gate straight ahead, so you didn't miss anything. Um, once again, we're going to the left. Open this gate. Once again, we're going to take a left at the Adamant Armor. We're going to pass by the bank. Here's the bank. Actually, I think I'd go in the bank and put my money in there. No, I need my money. Why would I do that? What are you doing, bro? You need your money to buy your spells. Why are you going back to the bank? The burnished coin. This is the bank. So if you didn't see it the first time, here's the bank again. Not sure why I'm even here. I probably just forgot that I needed to go buy spells. Oh, I didn't grab all my money. I just didn't want to be heavy, I think. But now I grab all my money. So 171 plat, even after buying those bracelets. But then I'm going to buy like 60 plat worth of spells and then a 50 plat Dragoon Dirk. So we really don't have much left after all that. And then I got to start thinking about my level 16 spells, which they get higher and higher. So take a left out of the bank, go through this tunnel with the two guards, go in between the two guards. That was the hardest part, I felt like, right there. Those two guards, go in between them two. Here's the uh, caster guild. If you take a left from those two guards and you follow along this little, in this little alleyway with a little ramp on it, and then go up this right here, you can get to the caster guild. Some of your spells will end up being in here, just like one or two each level will be in here for some reason. So like bind affinities here, less lesser shielding is here. Um, I guess it's spells that a lot of different people can use. And like eh, if it's a a necro pet or a fear or like a necro dot, then it's definitely going to be in the necromancer guild. But spells like bind and lesser shielding and and gate and root, like the stuff he has there, identify and visibility. Stuff that multiple different classes can use, I guess, are in the Caster Guild here. But we grabbed um, Bind Affinity from him, so I'm excited about that. That'll save us a lot of time in the future. Probably more time than you would know. Instead of running all the way from Nectalus to, like, 
um, Befallen. We can bind right outside of Befallen. Instead of uh, going through three zones to get to the bank and in the Necromancer Guild, we can bind right, right by the bank. You know what I mean? So now we have a choice. But back through between those two guards, like I said, that's probably the hardest part of getting to the Necromancer Guild is finding that little tunnel with the two guards on each side and finding this zone line. I think this is called the third quarter. At least for me, that was the hardest part. Like, going from the zone line of the third gate to the zone line of the Nariac Commons. If you can figure that out, then you pretty much figured out the uh, zone. Once you know where the bank is, where the vendor is that sells the bags, and where your guild is that's like all you really need to know but here's people killing the uh guards like i my tip of um picking up a staff and a shield especially if you're a necro to give to your pet and it's a decent staff to start with uh as any class really i mean it's five damage 28 delay it's better than like a crack staff or a um worn staff or anything you can get in the wild it's a little bit better at least a little bit. I think the delay is like a little bit better than a crack staff or something. So, and it sells for more. And if you, like I say, you can always just sell it. If you don't need the shield or the staff, you can always just sell the stuff. But I was going to try to loot it, but I guess it wasn't old enough. You got to wait till there's only like a minute or two left before it's uh, lootable to everyone. I thought that guard was coming after me. I was like, holy crap. But it wasn't. Um. Couldn't loot that, so I'm going to go over to these. But there's always people trying to loot this stuff. So, between me and this guy, I didn't get anything. I had asked Strikes. Um, I said, do you mind if I loot these guards? Uh, and he said, yeah, there's some others looting too. It's all good. I figured I would ask. I, I try to ask. I don't ask all the time, because if it's just sitting there rotting, obviously rotting, then I don't always ask. But... I like to ask sometimes, just to, um, I mean, you should, you should ask. Okay, I say, okay, sorry for the distraction, good luck. They might appreciate that later on, you never know. Very high level person, like in his 50s, figured I'd be nice, uh, you know, thank them and, um, and apologize for distracting them. A noob running through, talking and asking for things. When they're when they're fighting guards and they're it's probably really hard. There's only two of them. I've seen that guy die before. Like it's not easy. But this is the Necro Guild. You have to go by the ghouls back there. Let me go backwards real quick. Sorry. Um. So here's the guard corpse once again. You just want to run along the left side here. Instead of going in the middle there, you want to run along the left side. You don't want to go in the middle. Where the water is and everything, that building there. If you're not a necromancer, I don't know what's in there. It could be Enchanter Guild or Shadow Knight Guild or Mage Guild. I don't know. But you don't you wanna just ignore the crap in the middle and run around the the outside of the like over here, ignore this in the middle, just run along the water. If you see the skeleton, you're going the right way. Run along the right wall, head through this, down here, keep going. You know, go through this gate. And I say, okay, and I've already said that. I already told you guys that. But this is like the only way you can go, I'm pretty sure, is through this gate right here. Uh, once you pass all the stuff that we already passed. Take a left once again. Go along these stairs. There's like another guild up those stairs. Don't go in that guild. Go along. Go past that building to the wall. And then go through this area where there's ghouls. You'll see the ghouls. Go through the ghoul area. And here's the Necromancer Guild right here. So go through this gate. Up the stairs. In here, now you're in the Necromancer Guild. You just gotta find, you know, who you want to talk to in here. The guild leader guy is right here. He's right there. You can uh, upgrade and whatnot. Like your uh, skills. If you want to up. Uh, evocation or swimming or sense heading or bind wound or whatever you want to do. You get a, like five points per level or something. This lady will will sell your spells a lot of the time. She'll be the one you want to go to. But there's also a guy on the other side of that wall behind her. So you have to go through past the guild leader guy and around the other side of this wall and there's another couple people that sell spells. 
So you might want to just look it up online as to who sells what spell. Like, I don't know what the website I go to is called. Um, let me look it up. Try not to blare something in your ear real quick. See if I can look it up before this is over. We got, like, 30 seconds left. All right, no, not YouTube. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Um, I don't know. I think it's just the wiki. Wikiproject1999.com. So wiki.project1999.com is where you would go to look up where what spells you got for each level and where to get them. So that's what I do, and then I get every spell. It costs me a bunch, but I get them all. Anyway, like, share, subscribe. Uh, consider joining. It helps a lot. And I'll see you all next time, probably deep and befallen behind that locked door. Peace.